All right, friend, is your kitchen kind of a hot mess sometimes or all the time? Because mine is slash was, but I think I finally found the ticket to use your own personal organization style to find a system that actually works for you. So keep on listening. I really think that this is going to be helpful to a lot of people. Welcome to the Homestead Challenge Podcast, where we will finally figure out how to make homesteading work in this modern world. I'm your host, Brittany, kind of crunchy mom and fellow modern homesteader. I've walked the path you're on, navigating burnout, overwhelm, information overload, serious lack of time, and uncertainty of where to even start. But I've also discovered a way to integrate homesteading into my modern busy life. If you're itching to kick off your homesteading journey on your terms, you're in the right spot. In each episode of this podcast, I'll be dishing out quick and straightforward homesteading tips, sharing home management systems, and providing modern solutions that fit seamlessly into your suburban lifestyle. Ready to turn your homesteading goals into a reality? Join me, and together we'll navigate the world of homesteading in a way that suits our lives. So grab that sourdough starter from the back of your fridge, girl. It's time to rise. Happy Friday. It is Friday again. And oh my goodness, it is February. I am probably not the only person that you hear saying this today. So I apologize in advance for that. But wow, where did January go? I feel like so much has happened, yet absolutely nothing has happened. And that's just kind of how motherhood usually goes, right? But I just want to confess to you that I have tried nothing new in the area of homesteading this month. Perhaps you can consider my elderberry gummies something new, but I've made the syrup plenty of times before, so not that new. And I think that that's okay. So as I've talked about before, I think that this time of year is really great for perfecting some of our systems. I don't want to say perfecting because it's never going to be perfect, but getting some things in place so that when it's go time, we can be prepared. So for me this year, the garden is my big thing. I have gardened before, but it was always in rental houses. So it looked much different than it's going to look this year as we put in our huge new garden. I say huge, which some of you may laugh at because I live on, I think a quarter acre. I don't even know, but obviously not huge, but for me, it's going to be huge because I was just gardening before out of containers and one raised bed. So that is going to be my learning for this year. I am not going to take on a bunch of other things, and I think that that is okay. But as I gear up and prepare for this season ahead, I know that it's going, I'm going to be outside all the time. That's the goal. That's what I want to do. So I want to kind of get my house in order so that when it's go time, I am ready. So part of that is making things function. I don't necessarily care how some things look right now. (laughs) Our house is, uh, we repainted a lot when we moved in, but there's definitely some areas that are still potentially not the cutest and that is okay. Not my focus this year. We just need things to function. So as I was thinking about this and thinking about my organization style, it brought me back to an OG YouTuber that I used to watch all the time, Clutterbug. So if you have heard of her before, you it's likely that you have because she's still very much active on YouTube and has an excellent, excellent podcast. I do not have her on the show today with me, but if I ever did, that would be lovely. Um, she's absolutely wonderful and has come up with this system of organizing that it is not Pinterest perfect. It is not what you always think of when you think of, okay, I need to organize and declutter my house and go to the container store and make every single thing perfect, which, you know, maybe trips to the container store can still happen, but it's a way that works for you and doesn't make you feel bad about not being able to organize in the way that you think that people should be organizing. I hope that that makes sense. So I want you to, if you're able to, pause right now and go take the quiz on her website to figure out which organization style you are. Uh, It's clutterbug.me. I will link it in the show notes. If you're driving on the go, then you can actually go ahead and listen to the whole episode and take the quiz at the end. I want you to listen to the episode and think about 
which one of these organization styles you think you are, because there's one that I always thought I was my whole life. And now it is so much more clear to me that that is why it wasn't working because I was always trying to organize in one of these styles and it's just not the way my brain works. And that is absolutely okay. So she has these styles organized, actually classified as different kinds of bugs. And if you go through her website, you'll figure out what those mean. I'm not going to go too into detail because you should absolutely go check out what she has to offer. This is her system. So the first kind of bug is the ladybug, and this is the most popular type of organizer. She describes it as because the ladybug looks really pretty on the outside, and then when it opens up its pretty wings, it's kind of just like a normal gross bug. (laughs) So this is the most common thing. You might go to somebody's house, and it looks immaculate and tidy and beautiful, and then they you open the closet, like the Monica closet, and there are just things shoved in different places because they want it to look really nice, but they also don't have the time or the capacity to be able to perfectly put everything away in little tiny organizers and everything like that. So if their systems are not in place, things are probably a hot mess inside of those drawers. So like I said, tidy on the outside, don't open the closet. (laughs) The next style is a butterfly. So these people are actually more visual. So they don't like totally clear counters. They actually like to see all of their pretty things out and about. And they, um, they will forget about things if they are behind closed doors. So If it's completely out of sight, it is totally out of mind. So they need uh, fewer, larger categories to sort their things easily. These people probably are the people that feel really messy all the time because no organizing systems have worked for them. And they often have bad habits where they're not putting things away very often. Spoiler alert, I'm a butterfly. And I never would have guessed that I was a butterfly. Uh, More on that later. I'm kind of shocked, but also it makes a lot of sense. So being a butterfly isn't necessarily a bad thing. If you're typically messy, there are things that we can do, which is awesome. The third style is a cricket, which is kind of the fantasy self for a lot of us. This is who I used to think that I was, and I would organize in this way. So this is the traditional organizer, what we think of when we think of a super organized person. They have all sorts of Behind closed doors, beautiful organizers with things in detailed little categories. Um, Everything might be labeled or not, but there's just like little closed containers all inside of these beautiful, perfect, neat drawers. It's like hyper organization. They don't mind stopping to actually put something away when they are done with it. And they want to know exactly where something is when they're looking for it. But these people aren't necessarily perfect either. Um, Their biggest problem is that they they can have very neat stacks and piles all over the place because they might procrastinate putting the stuff away when they actually have time to put it away perfectly. So because they can't put it away perfectly, they might just never put it away. And so if you think that you're a cricket and you're not putting things away and it's not natural for you to put things away like that, you might not actually be a cricket. So that's something to definitely consider because I always just thought that I was a cricket because I had every single organization system in place. I had 1 million beautiful, neat drawers and a closet. Everything was perfectly organized, but then I would literally forget about things. I would never use something or even feel like I could be creative if everything was actually all tidied up in my home. I would just sit and like not feel like I could do anything in there. And then when I wasn't able to put things away perfectly, I just wouldn't put them away at all. And everything became a big pile up of so many piles of things. It might look kind of neat and tidy, but then eventually the piles will overtake you. So The fourth style is a B. So this person is usually like super busy and they might actually be a perfectionist, but this person also has hoarding tendencies. 
They are also visual organizers like the butterfly. Like they don't need everything to be put away. They like to see all the pretty stuff, but they want it to be hyper organized. So she describes it as like if you see a beautiful craft room with open pegboards and there's one million little jars of all the tiny individual little things, but they're all beautifully color coded on the wall. Imagine that style of organization. That is a B. Like I said, my style, I don't know if it's changed over the years or I just thought that I was a cricket and it turns out that I'm actually a butterfly. <laughs> like Things have piled up over the years. And so I found that I've definitely had a fantasy self and it's important to know what your actual style is so you can make your kitchen especially function for your family. Now, here's kind of the caveat. Obviously, we're, most of us are not the only person living in our home. If you are, super, you can just get going on all of these hacks here. Well, not necessarily hacks, but these ways of organizing right now. But if you have somebody else in your family who is in charge of, um, you know, putting away the dishes or cooking or that just lives with you and uses the kitchen every day, you might want to take their style into account too. So... It, I think that I potentially my single self could have been a cricket, but then as I got married and had kids, I found that one, I wasn't having the time and two, that style didn't really mesh with them. I do think that my husband is a butterfly as well. I'm not sure. We'll have to have him take the quiz, but that's what's important is having your other person, people that live with you in the house take this quiz too and try to find compromises so that way you're not setting up all these systems and then no one in your house can actually <laughs> keep up with them. Um, so I'm going to go ahead next and talk about each organizing style and give just a few tips of ways that you can organize your kitchen uh, in that style that might help you as you're thinking about ways to organize. So for a ladybug, you are going to want to use large bins and baskets that are opaque. You don't need to see through them because they might be hot mess inside these bins and baskets and drawer organizers, uh, but they need to have no lids. So these bins and baskets are going to be behind closed doors, so you cannot see them. You don't mind opening the cabinet to put things away, but you just want to kind of throw it. So an example that she said is you might just have one basket labeled uh, medicine and then you throw any type of medicine, band-aids, whatever. It all just goes in this big basket. You don't need um, a little thing that says antacids here, band-aids here, neosporin here, whatever. Uh, you just need a big old thing that you can throw it in, hide it, put it away, but at least it, then it's all contained in a bin. So those broader categories are really going to help you out. If you are a butterfly, in your kitchen. I have actually already started implementing some of these things for myself. Uh, open shelving in the kitchen is great. And obviously open shelving doesn't work for everyone, but it does work for a butterfly. So being able to see this stuff means you're actually going to use it. And then hopefully you won't have as much food going bad, rotting in the pantry because you're not seeing it. So for me, this looks like clear mason jars. You don't have to have like the ugly store packaging out there just because you are um, maybe a messier person. Uh, for me, this also means next to my coffee maker, I have a cute little old library drawer that holds all of my coffee making supplies. And I put that in, um, like I have vanilla extract that I use and I put that in a pretty little glass bottle. I have a pretty little scoop. I have pretty mason jars. It all looks nice. So even if that's not your style, you wouldn't come into my house and be like, oh, gross. <laughs> but it helps me a lot because when I used to try to store all that stuff in the cabinet, I wouldn't put it away. I, I mean, I guess I am just a messy person. I don't know, but I would not do it. I would literally just leave it out on the counter right next to the coffee maker. So if you're going to do that and you find that that's what happens to you every single day and you just leave it right next to it, then store it right next to it in an open container in pretty clear jars. Just make it prettier. That has helped me so much. And um, the open shelving 
like I said, then I can see all my food and I remember what I have and it doesn't go and just rot away in the back of a cabinet because I will never remember to use it. All right, if you are a cricket, then I'm sure that your home is beautiful. So I don't know how much I have to offer you, but <laughs> closed cabinets and doors. Um, you are one of the people that I would say probably don't have the modern open shelving because you're not going to like it. It's going to drive you crazy. Put everything in those hidden containers. In It can be like opaque containers, whatever you want it to be inside your cabinets because you're actually going to use them, which is beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. But what I'm going to challenge you to do, and this is what uh, over at Clutterbug, she's challenging you to do, is to embrace good enough organization. So if you're a cricket, it's very possible that other people in your house are not crickets. So make sure that you're looking at some systems that are a little bit more functional for them so that you don't go totally crazy when you're in your kitchen and people aren't putting away the measuring spoons in the measuring spoon spot. Maybe you just need to have a basket that has all measuring spoons, measuring cups, you know, things like that. You don't have to be unorganized. You can absolutely still uh, have things organized in a way that will be aesthetically pleasing and in a way that makes sense, but just maybe embracing good enough and don't let things pile up because it's not perfect and you can't make it perfect or afford to go buy all the containers you want to buy right now or whatever it may be. You can just do what you can with what you have. And last but not least, we have the bees. So she does talk about bees being the most likely to accumulate clutter. So before you start organizing your kitchen, I have to say it's probably time to let a few things go. It's going to be okay. Think about what you have and would you repurchase it if you were to go to the store now? All right, but if you are going to organize your kitchen, then I don't really know how you would incorporate like peg racks, but I'm thinking hooks. So maybe you're the type of person that would love to see all of your measuring cups, like from size order on different little hooks with little specific spots to go. That might bring you so much joy or having it all color coded in clear organizers or containers, any kind of system that's out in the open and beautiful and fun for you to see. I think that you're going to really love and utilize. Uh, you might even have like one of those magnetic strips for knives. If you don't have children that will grab those knives. <laughs> um, so there's just a lot of different ways that you can have things out in the open pretty and uh, you don't need like the big bins. You might really, really, really find that you're jiving with the hooks and whatnot. So everyone, that was all four types. I would love if you could go over to the Facebook group and tell me what type of organizer you are. Uh, maybe I'll put a little poll over there so we can all see what everybody is. And if anybody in any of the bug categories has specific suggestions for anyone else, I would love to see that because I want to build a community here where we can all learn from each other. And if you have like a weird way of organizing in your kitchen that's just like super functional for you, it'll probably help somebody else out too. So your homework is to go take the quiz and then go let us know over in the Facebook group what you are and maybe something new that you're gonna be implementing in your kitchen. If you did find this valuable, please share it with a friend. It would mean the world to me. Until next time, talk to you later. Hey, thank you so much for joining me on another episode of the Homestead Challenge podcast. I hope our time together has empowered you to take meaningful steps on your homesteading journey. If you've enjoyed our conversation and found value in today's tips, please take a moment to leave a review on your preferred podcast platform. Your feedback means the world to me and it helps others discover the podcast. Let's keep the conversation going. Connect with me on Instagram. You can find me at Brittany L. Gibson. The link is in the show notes. Share your favorite takeaways from the episode, ask questions, or suggest topics of what you'd like to hear in the future. For an even deeper dive into the homesteading community, join our Facebook group where other suburban homesteading mamas share their experiences, ask questions, and support each other on their unique homesteading journeys. Just search for the Homestead Challenge community on Facebook and request to join. Remember, every small step on your homesteading path is a victory. 
Whether you're nurturing plants on your windowsill or mastering the art of sourdough, you're making a difference. Keep at it. Until next time, let's watch our homesteads flourish together.